Okay, <clears throat> so experiment four was colony morphology. Um, and the purpose of this experiment was to um, know how to recognize and describe uh, colony morphology. Um, okay, so cells grow in clusters called colonies. These colonies have a variety of shapes and colors, and the collective characteristics like the shape and the color of a colony are termed the colony morphology. Now, the important thing here is that next lab, I think we went over back about cell morphology, and you got to recognize the differences that the colony morphology rec is corresponding to the shape of the colony itself, while the um, cellular morphology is about the cell. So those are distinct ways of describing things. Um, the cellular morphology you'll need like the microscope to describe and things like that. Um, but the colony morphology is reliant upon uh, the bacteria growing, of course, and actually the medium on which the um, bacteria grew. If you remember, kind of, maybe, if, when you grow E. coli on a TSA plate, they're like these circular um, white, like little colonies. Um, but if, but if you remember from later in the lab, when we put them on the E and B plate for your uh, confirm test, um, they're actually like that metallic green, if you remember. And that's because the two different plates are made up of different stuff. And so that the way that the bacteria um, uses that stuff as energy uh, allows the bacteria to grow differently. Um, okay. So for this experiment, all, we, all she did was... Um, she gave us a variety of bacterias and we had to try to find out what they are and try to explain them. Um, and <clears throat> she gave us E. coli, uh, Bacillus cerus, Bacillus carius, Micrococcus luteus, staph, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, Streptomyces colicolor, and Serratia marsins. Okay. That's very hard to say. Um, the important thing here, first of all, uh, when you're taking your midterm, the way that you put the name is very important. A lot of people are very, some people are very technical about how you put it. Um, others not so much, but when you're on a computer, you want to um, make sure to italicize it. You capitalize the, <coughs> the first letter and then this of the um, genus name and then the species name, you uh, leave that lowercase. Uh, now I'm on a computer and so I put it in italicized, but when you're on your test you can't do that. So what you do is you underline it. Um, I know a couple TAs are very picky about this space right here. I, it's kind of obnoxious in my opinion. Um, but I know a couple of my friends got a, a couple points taken off because they underlined the whole thing. But technically you're supposed to leave a space here, I think. I'm not even sure if that's correct or not, but some people took off so it might be in your better judgment to not underline that space just to be careful it's in my opinion it's not that big of a deal and I think sometimes people just try to find ways to All right, whatever um, <clears throat> the important thing is is that you just need to capitalize the first letter leave the second letter lowercase and then underline each individual word um, and that's the proper way of um, presenting a bacteria name on the test. So you got to make sure to remember that. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, okay, so now, okay, the way to describe it are very, are sometimes kind of tricky to tell because, I mean, as if you remember when you're doing this experiment, you kind of look at it and usually you can find out the whole colony shape. Sometimes the irregular and the rhizoids may get confused. Um, but again, for rhizoids, you're kind of looking for the little filaments coming off. And irregular, it's just kind of a clus, I mean, a, uh, a regular shape. Sorry. Um, okay, the margin shape can get tricky um, because that's probably the hardest one for me. Um, I don't really know what to tell you. Try to ask someone maybe uh, to figure out how to tell distinguish these. I don't know. Um Elevation ones, those can get kind of tricky too because these umbilate ones, sometimes this little bump right here is very, almost looks flat. And so, 
or it may be really big to where it looks convex um, and it doesn't necessarily look distinct just try to find in your culture a good representative sample and then do your best um, and then the optical properties are usually kind of tricky usually the margin shape and the elevation are the ones people struggle with the most but again it, with the opaque and translucent things um, it's about <coughs> holding it up to the light and then once you and if you can kind of see through it then it is translucent and then if it's just kind of like a solid mass then it's opaque um, surface characteristics you try to want to find a glare of dull and shiny and then pigmentation is easy of, uh, of course um, and so we're gonna look at some examples um, so <coughs> You can find more examples because we're not going to be going over them, but try to look for examples of each colony type before you um, before you take the test. We're just going to be going over a couple here. So this is circular. Um, you want to be looking at each individual cell and see this is circular, that's circular, and so this is on general circular. The irregular one, it just kind of looks like a cluster of everything. Punctiform, you don't need to know. That's not in our lab manual. Um, I don't know what. Oh, okay, all right, so this one is a smooth thing, undulate. Um, this is kind of a bad picture. I don't really know why that's here. Lobate, I don't think you need to know that one, but I might be wrong. I forgot. Um, filamentous, again, this is just hard to tell right here. Like, if I were to see this, I would think um, just kind of wavy or irregular or something. I don't know. Um, flat they don't have a picture of umbilate they have a really good picture of right here where you can distinctly see it but um, but sometimes it doesn't actually look that drastic um, convex I, that's a pretty good picture you can kind of see these like the three dimensionality of it um, <coughs> and you don't need to know those um, and so those are some real life examples I encourage you to try to um, sorry um, I, I encourage you to try to uh, find. I encourage you to try to find examples of each one, and um, and then um, and become familiar with each colony morphology. Um, and then how to write the bacteria name is very important. And then distinguish. And then what this allows you to do is that when you have a consistent colony morphology, um, you have, and and you have something that varies from that consistency, then you can um, identify that as a contaminant and recognize that that's not what you want. You want the consistency in the colony morphology. So that's the importance of colony colony morphology and um, and that. And so try to look up examples and become familiar with all those because this is an important skill because I think you'll have to do it on your practical.